Yesterday, we discussed a bit in detail PCA, principal component analysis. I think that you got most of the technicalities behind it. And um, we show this uh, nice environment. It is very simple, but it's quite effective in demonstrating the, the purpose and the possible usage of a dimensionality reduction like, like PCA. And um, yesterday I asked you to do that by yourself. And uh, I got the feeling that uh, most of you didn't did not complete the exercise. So um, I would like to start today another exercise. In the you already you should have downloaded the the, the file about uh, PCA. It is a zip. And inside this zip, there is the Iris data CSV. It is, a, it is some data about uh, flowers. Basically, you see you have the length of the sepal, the, the width, uh, the petal, the length of the petal, the petal width. Basically, are flowers with a little bit of classification about their dimensions. And they have been classified in three different classes. These attributes refers to the class of this, of this flower. So it is a simple data set, but even being simple, it's not possible to get some insight of, of it uh, looking to the data, to the numbers. And it's not possible to project it because it has four variables, four attributes. And it is, not, it is hard to see something about it. So I suggest that you try to practically inspect it uh, using PCA, you have the example about wine, you should have this file, 04 PCA wine full sklearn.python, do a copy of it, calling it 05 PCA iris.python. And uh, let's go for modification. That is uh, the typical way in which we, um, to some program in 2021. Uh, and this is also a way to learn from example that they put on, 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 uh, on, on classroom. Basically, I got some, some data sets, uh, some methods from, from, from the web, I collected them, and they are useful for doing that. So you, you had to go for modification. And once you have run it, this uh, new version of the, of the PCA on Iris, you should have a, um, the possibility of exploring it with this environment. This, this um, uh, simple D3 application is totally parametric. It depends only on the file that uh, you feed, the, use, you use for feeding it. So you, you, it, it, it can work with any kind of, of uh, of uh, any number of dimension, any number of clusters, and it will work perfectly also for Iris. And there are some notes for you. First of all, uh, we have the class range. The from zero to 50 is class one, from 50 to 100 is class two, and from 100 to the end is class three. And the, there is a little difference between this file and the wine file. In this case, you have the attributes of the first row. And you have the class description in the last column instead of the first one. And uh, don't go for the hope that uh, you, a standard exists. If you go around with data files, you will get with or without attributes in the first row. Row, you will get the, the class specification in the first row, in the last one, in a in totally mixed way. So, yeah, in doing your modification, you have to take into account these three stories. And uh, I ask you, in, both in, in the class physically or, or in the chat, to send me a done when you are done with this uh, result or, and or ask questions. Hmm? The code is available, uh, and we can discuss it. 
The idea is, is to get more familiar with that code. Uh, this year, I would like to go for more experimentation with dimensionality reduction. Okay, let's go. Waiting for your questions or having done, and then put in pause the recording. So the, the main issues were to define the new attributes and to read the data, skipping the first line. This is a typical problem because if the PCA method find some text, it's not able to go through text to means or, or whatever. And after that, the genetic file must be changed to guarantee that the order is a first component, second component, classes, and the rest of the label in any order. If you, are, if you are done with it, we can try to see, that should be the result. And this is, should be the, the environment that you should get in, 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 uh, in the web server. I try to move on it just to discuss what we can do. Let me run just a moment to run the, the server. Okay, you should see the new environment. And I want to discuss you some, show you some insight you can get. The size is the same. If you brush on, on, a, on the scatter pot, you have the, the uh, corresponding lines on the parallel record needs highlighted. But I want to show you something interesting. The cluster are somehow well separated. You have the first cluster, second cluster, the third cluster. And you can try to use this to select a wood cluster. And it works. This is cluster number one. But uh, if you look here, I am, okay, you see this element. This element that belongs to this cluster, but is far away, away from the other. If I select it, you see the red line on the bottom. It is somehow far away. And the same happens for this element here. If you select these, these three elements on the third cluster, they belong to the cluster but they are different. And a good way to highlight this is, uh, is the following. I select in blue the wood, the wood class number three. And after that, I light these uh, three elements. And you can see that these three elements are somehow they're not outliers within the cluster. However, I think you, you got the story. Uh, go through the code uh, to be more familiar with it. And uh, um, for me, we are done with the PCA. There are any questions about the software, the, the visualization, the purpose of, this, of PCA? And uh, I have to improve this environment because I want to have it uh, in the both directions. Now it is only one way. It is good, but it's not enough. Okay. Uh, anyhow, I will put the solution of the, this exercise on, on the web, so you can run it uh, having this working on a tom. And now I stop my sharing, I go to the slide again. And this is the story. Again, PCA is able to separate the cluster. Hmm? There are some ambiguity here, this blue inside. Again, it should be a problem in the classification. It, it may be a, a problem of a projection. You are, you are observing two dimension out of four. Hmm? 
Remember that the PCA produces a new, um, a new set of coordinates with the same cardinality of the region of data. And after that, after that, you project on the first component and second component. And um, just uh, let me show you some calculation. If you run the, I have to change the share. I'm sharing my Python environment. This is the code. And uh, if, I run, if I run the code on the Alice data set, I have to stop the server. The server is uh, really boring. If I run the code, I get the, the cluster. And I have again some information about the data, the covariance matrix. And for instance, if you look for the, the first two components now are getting 95%, 96% of the variance of the data. It is good. Okay, you can run it, you, you, you can click on it. Be familiar with it, please. Now, be back to the slides. Let's change totally the topic. No, not totally because I'm still talking about multidimensional scaling. But now I am talking about MDS. That is, that is a, a, a dimensionality reduction technique quite different from PCA. Basically, you have a set of elements, T1, T high, on a multidimensional space. But the data is not so relevant because basically you consider this item as a single item and you are going, going to design a dissimilarity matrix. It is a matrix, it is square matrix. It, have, it has on the, on the row and the column, the I element. And for each pair, there is a value. This value reports the information what is about the distance, the similarity among the two elements. Basically, it reports the dissimilarity because it wants to resemble the the, the distance among elements. When the distance between two elements is zero, the dissimilarity is zero. They are totally equal. Hmm? We are reasoning in the other way around. You can also reason about uh, similarity, but uh, reasoning in terms of dissimilarity make this corresponding to the intuition of distance among elements. And uh, this dissimilarity matrix is done considering the elements, not the attributes. Hmm? Element one, two, three, four, five. The way in which you put the value can be derived by these uh, numerical values. But here there is only a number for each pair. Zero means equal. A very high number means very dissimilar. And the idea is to plot the data on a bidimensional space in a way that the distance, the Euclidean distance on the plane resemble the distance that, the, not the distance, the similarity they have in this matrix. So if in this matrix you have a zero, the two elements should be very, very close to each other. If in the matrix you have a very high number, the elements should be far away. And the, this mapping is done optimizing a cost function that is called the stress function. One example is basically take the, the distance in the bidimensional plane in R power two, rest two, 
less the distance they have, the vicinity they have here, squared, relative to two. And the, the, the minimum should be zero. The perfect mapping would be zero. I give you an example to clarify that. Assume that you have some cities in the USA. For each city, you have a, a lot of pieces of information. The name of the city, the number of inhabitants, so blah, 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 what we have. But here we have, we have a, the typical map info table reporting the distance between two cities. Hmm? To go to New York, to Boston, you have to do 206 miles, I think that is, it is in miles. From New York and Denver, you have 1,771 miles and so on. Hmm? I think you're familiar with this. To go to Boston to Boston, the distance is zero. The diagonal is zero. So Boston is very is similar to Boston. It, it, it is equal. The mean, this is this, think of this as a, a dissimilarity matrix. If the two cities are very far each other, they are not similar. And the, the, the value is very high. If the two cities are very close or they coincide that they are distant zero, they are very similar. So totally dissimilar, zero dissimilarity. The other way around, just reasoning the other way around. And you want to plot. Here we have uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items hmm? on a scatter plot in a way in which the distance between them resemble the dissimilarity they have. For instance, you see that San Francisco and Los Angeles are very close here. And San Francisco to Los Angeles are 379 miles. Instead, Miami and Seattle are very far away. Miami and Seattle is 3,200 miles. This is the idea, basically. The, this is the idea of, of a multidimensional scaling. Having a, a pairwise number between the, all the elements in the data set that you can interpret as the distance between them or the dissimilarity is the same thing. And you want a plot, a bidimensional plot in which the distance of the elements resemble this, no more than that. And uh, what is the, the story? Basically, the algorithm taken as an input, a score, a square matrix, symmetric, because uh, of course it's symmetric, that contains all the elements with the number for the pair that is zero, meaning equal. And this, this similarity can be street distance or uh, other stuff, totally different. The taste of the food, the image, the image similarity, whatever you want to, you, any kind of dissimilarity or similarity that you can imagine can be put in that matrix. In some cases, the, the calculation is automatic because if you use the Euclidean, Euclidean distance, you get that automatically. But instead, if you go for every, for instance, here, we are not using the Euclidean distance. Because unless you are flying, you cannot go to Miami, to Boston in direct way. You have to follow the path on the street. So you have to compute it. it this is not the Euclidean distance. And, and um, as I said before, you can reverse your thinking, having a, matri a matrix of similarities in which zero means totally different. But uh, from now on, we, go, we can go with the similarity because it is more intuitive. You can translate it in terms of distance. Zero means equal. The distance is zero, they are equal. And as I said before, you can use Euclidean distance if you want, but you can use any kind of measure of dissimilarity. I can compare to students by the difference of the exam they did, or I can compute the difference between two cities as the number, the difference in number of inhabitants. It is really powerful. It is a creative activity. 
while a PCA is a straightforward. It works on, on Euclidean distance. So you, you go for a linear transformation, you know the story, and you have the result. That's that. You cannot tweak PCA. No, I'm wrong. I'm back just for a moment. What you can do on PCA? Here, we're assuming that you are using all the attributes of the data set apart the class attributes that is wrong. Maybe you can concentrate on a subset of it, what is called the feature selection, meaning I don't want to consider all the data set, I consider only a subset of the feature. This is the only creative activity you can do in PCA. Hmm? I can concentrate on alcohol, magnesium, and phenolics, and I do a PCA on only these three attributes from some reason. But that's that. After that, the, the computation is fully automatic. The algorithm go side forward and uh, you know the story. Here instead, you have a big power in, in your hand. You can define different kinds of similarity. I will show you the, the exciting possibilities you have. And uh, it works reducing the dimensionality because you can observe the data. Again, you can observe the data. Here is a totally different example. You have a host neck, T1, T2, T3, T4, and some human beings did some test on, on, on them, creating a zero if two snacks have the same test. They, are, they look the same from a human being perception. Or one, if the taste is totally different. And here you have another dissimilarity matrix in which these numbers are not computed in any way, are just the judgment. You are averaging the judgments of uh, some human beings. You can, you can ask opinion about the similarity about books hmm, or, or whatever. It doesn't matter. And then now we are going to see um, how to apply it with, with some software. If you have unzipped, um, this is wrong, you have to go to 01 and media 0. Europe root table dot Python. And I will show you how, how to go for uh, computing uh, MDS on it. We assume to have this data ready. If in, in, um, in the zip the folder, there is European, this European city distance dot CSV that contains this data. And now you go for this. The goal is to plot the data on the plane in a way in which the, the distance between cities, among cities, resemble the physical distance they have according to this uh, uh, matrix. And here I got a, a nice trick from uh, Stack Overflow to have some labels. On, on the points, and they give you this code for being reused, of course. Okay. Let's to understand before what is the what are the steps of this algorithm. The first point is to compute or to define the dissimilarity matrix. After that, you start to plot the, the points the high points on, a, on a, in theory, on any kind of space. Hmm? But uh, typically, you go for bidimensional space. You, you do that in a random fashion. You just put the point on, on, a, on the plane. After that, you compute the equivalent distance between the pairs. Let's call it uh, ME. You have the, the matrix of the similarity and the matrix of Euclidean distance on the plane. You compare MD and ME, and you, you evaluated the stress function 
basically how far they are. And you are just the point lowering this, this bill. You can go for less, a sort of like simulated and leaning and any kind of, of uh, algorithm you, you, you can use. You are to read several times, cycling on the cycling here, till either the stress uh, becomes zero, meaning that you have a perfect MDS, or uh, typically you stop after a prefixed number of iteration. And uh, a simple example of a stress function is just a difference between uh, the, the similarity value and the equidian distance value squared, squared by two. And here you have the code of this example. Basically, we go to read the European city distance CSV. Now I am using pandas uh, because pandas is very good in uh, automatically handling text in, 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 in a table. Hmm? Is able to recognize the, the text and skip it. Is able to infer if the first column is if, if the first row is containing labels or not. So it, it is more powerful. But you can do that also in the other way. It doesn't matter. And after that, having the, the data, we have the data dot values that contain all the values in the data. And basically, you take the first column in this way. You extract the first column, putting in a, here, and you have the city names. And uh, the same you do, you go for the, for cities, you go from uh, slicing slicing this, this value in, in, in this way. In, 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 the, in this way, you have the numerical values here and the name of the cities here. Pandas uh, is nice for uh, visualizing the data. If you just type type data in, in your environment or spider environment, you get this nice representation with a, a summary of how many rows and columns are around and the value that uh, it contains. After that, you are going to use the SKLearn MDS manifold um, method you just not this uh, you have the this parameter about how many iteration you can bear till stopping it automatically and there are some some part for uh, initializing it in a, in a random way and the other is the nice point you see the similarity equal to equidium by default mds use uh, the similarity computing the Euclidean distance between points. So it's very close to okay, PCA. But you can use also this uh, uh, value, the similarity equal to pre computed. And in this case, there is a, a room in, in your method in mds.fit to put the name of the matrix containing the value what we are doing here. So we have in cities, then all the name on the cities, getting a slice here, basically getting the first column of, 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 of the data set. After that, we have in POS, the physical embedding of the, of the point in the bidimensional space after the MDS. You see, we call it MDS, asking for two components, 3000 iteration, and asking for the similarity to be pre-computed using the, uh, the similarity magic. That, that is like this, here there's a slice. Basically, you see the zero in the middle is exactly this matrix we saw here with more elements, but it has the same structure. If you go to have a look to the 
European city distance CSV, you see uh, what is inside. Hmm? It's like this. And this is the position of the points computed by this, uh, this, um, this method. And after that, there is this uh, magic plotting that I got. Basically, the trick is, uh, is in this zip command. To each point, you, you assign an element of cities. So you, you have a range of points, a range of value, and it assign each of these elements to each of the position. Basically, I'm annotating the, the points with the, with, the, with the label of the name. And uh, there is something about the arrow style that you can use. You can tweak it. I, I am not an ex expert of it. I got it on, on Stack Overflow. It, it was looking nice and I using it right now. You can change, the, the main point is to change what you put inside in the label. I will reuse it instead of the name of the city. I can put the ID of the tuple in the data set or, or whatever. And this is the result. Basically, you have the point plotted in a bidimensional space. The magic trick with the plotting put the, the name of the, uh, of the city. And there is an arrow pointing to the point. You can modify the, the direction of the arrow or whatever. And you see that uh, it is quite convincing. Hmm? In Madrid and Istanbul are far away. Instead, Praga and Vienna are very close. And if you want, you can have uh, some uh, indication about the stress. In MDS attributes, there is also the stress. Uh, and you can measure all over it is, how close it are to the perfect solution, basically. And uh, that's that for uh, applying this, this, uh, this story. And here we have used the similarity matrix done by ourselves. Hmm? In the sense that we get, got this information on the web and we use it. But as I said before, in the method, we have also the possibility of using uh, the dissimilarity as a Euclidean. And here, I did uh, an experiment with wine again. I computed the MDS. You can go to the file 02 MDS wine Euclidean, in which we are applying MDS in the right way, but using the dissimilarity Euclidean. And if you run this file, you will get this, uh, this result. And now I wanted to think a little bit about that. This is PCA. We discussed it yesterday. Here is that is MDS produced by these uh, simple uh, steps. Hmm? And my question is, uh, they are somehow similar. Hmm? You can recognize the cluster, blue, green, and red. It is a little bit, a little bit different, but more or less they are similar. What is the strong difference between them? This is for you in, in the class, for people at home. What is the strong difference between these two plotting? in terms of, of what you are sure that is right observing the data or what is possible wrong. In PCA? Yeah. In PCA, you can have full positive. That's true. The, the, the discussion, okay. Before then that, we are talking, only talking about distance. 
Mm -hmm. And they, we can have false positive or false negative. In this case, not with equity and distance, but with respect to, to the, the dissimilarity matrix. Mm -hmm. In this case, the, the, the dissimilarity matrix is, is exactly the equity and distance. But in PCA, it's possible to have false positive. What about uh, MDS? It is possible. It is possible to have a false, false positive also in MDS. Question mark. Here too, there is uh, an answer in the chat. Closeness is not, is not preserved. Yes, we can have. A, this is a strong point. We can have also false negative. Because of this plotting is just obtained by iteration, in which we remove the point of the plane. And each time we, we recompute the stress function, it is a sort of optimization of, of, of a cost function. There is no any guarantees that the points that are close in the original space will be closer in this projection. Instead, this is true for PCA. Close objects in the original space are also close in this projection. Basically, in PCA does not exist false negative by definition. We have false positive. In MDS, we can have both false positive, false positive and false negative. Because uh, the plotting is an optimization process that can fail in both directions. The qualities, however, is uh, good enough, but uh, you have no guarantee. So if your point, oh, not sure. If you apply MDS, there is the possibility that you mitigate some false positive. Point that the projection puts very close each other when they should be far away, maybe that, that they're well represented there. So maybe that the world, it, it depends on many collision you have, you have, you have here. Hmm? There is no way to, to, to assess which one is, be, is the better. But uh, in my opinion, my feeling is that uh, it is better to go for PCA when uh, you are dealing with your linear distance. And it, it, you are, it is mandatory to go for, with MDS when, when you are not dealing with your linear distance, because there is no, no way to do that. And uh, I want to show you here, in, in the code, there is another example of labeling uh, points. Hmm? In this case, I put in the label the, 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 the tuple ID. And uh, you can do the same, uh, this is for wine. Hmm? You are putting wine uh, elements. And I put the index on the, on the, on, in the original table inside. And you can put the same value here. So I am providing you a couple of ways to labeling the points. It is useful for discovering something, but I mean, um, we are going to use D3 for visualization. But if you typically use Python, for, do, for doing the dimensionality reduction. You, you cannot, you can implement it in D3, but, or in, in JavaScript, it makes no sense. So the, the idea is to have some simple visualization in Python, just, just for mm, showing the result and discussing the story. But you will never use this in your exam. You will go with something better. And uh, let's now 
to show this example. We have uh, a data set in your, in your, I don't remember the name, is cities, distance, or something like that. Let me, let me check. It is inhabitants. It has only the name of the city and the name of inhabitants, thousands of inhabitants. It is that. It is a bidimensional data set, but we have only one numerical dimension. And the idea is, okay, let's try to define a difference between city, a similarity the other way around. And for instance, I, I started with this idea, the difference between the similarity between two cities is measured in terms of how many inhabitants they have. If they are, they are similar, if they have the same number of inhabitants. They are very far away if they are, have a, a big difference in number of inhabitants. So I feel that the, the, the similarity matrix with the difference of inhabitants between e and j, i and j. Note that the, the similarity matrix is still bidimensional, even if the data set is monodimensional. The, the similarity matrix is driven by the number of elements in the data set. This is a big, da, a big, uh, uh, data set big there are all, all the the city in italy hmm? they're big let's say 200 143 hmm? and you have a, a square matrix 143 by 143 and let's see the code for applying this you have the file already working on your on your folder basically I am using here the NumPy zeros uh, method that create a, a matrix full of zeros of this dimension, Though where data is the length of the data that I read using Panda parser. So I load, I load the data. I extract from the data the value that is only the first column. The zero column, this column contains labels. I take this as, a, as the values. So the second column. And I put in cities the name of the cities. I created this similarity with the full of zeros. And with this double cycle, I put in each element of this, this similarity matrix the difference of inhabitants between city I and city I and J. And I put ABS in the absolute value to have always a positive value. I don't want a negative value in, in, in the story. And after that, I run the MDS method, putting the similarity matrix in the fit method and stating that the similarity is pre-computed. If you run the code, you, you can observe the, the similarity matrix uh, structure. But this is the result. It is nice. This is based only on the difference, on the distance between, uh, between uh, the number of inhabitants. And you can see that Roma is far away from all the other cities. And um, you can see that Milano is the closest to Roma. After you have the big city, Napoli, Torino, Palermo, Genova, and, and, and so on. Here we have a lot of, of cities crowded because they are very similar in terms of number of inhabitants. The difference is going to be little between them. It is an, it's a, it's an example of we are close to the, to the, the break. I'm going to, have a, we have a, stop, a long stop now. The point is, is a demonstration of 
of the creativity you can have in this. Hmm? This is this is simple idea, just using the, the difference. CI less G, CJ. But you can do something more. You can think something more. For instance, uh, you can think about uh, uh, the difference is not so significant. A difference 1,000 inhabitants is a big difference or is it, is, is it a little difference? It depends on the number of inhabitants. One million, one million plus 1,000 is not the same from 1,000 to 2,000. So maybe you can try to uh, produce a different dissimilarity matrix. I'll show you another, another example and we stop for, for, for the lunch. It is given by, by the last consideration. The idea is uh, to use uh, a normalization. I normalize the difference between uh, inhabitants by the sum of the number of inhabitants of the two cities. And you have this nice structure in which Roma is still far away. It's a, you see, more or less, it's the center of this curve. It's not the same, it's, it's like a focus. But we have a, a more detailed analysis of the, of the cities. We, we, <clears throat> we get more information because we are normalizing the difference or the similarity between two cities using the, the total number of inhabitants. And the, uh, now we are we stop for the, for, for the lunch. <clears throat> but uh, I want to stress the idea that uh, you can be really creative in that. You can have a nice task to solve and you can define your own MDS. In my opinion, MDS is superior to PCA. PCA is a standard, is mechanical, is that that's that. But uh, and it's based only on the, on, on the Euclidean distance. Here we are using something different that is totally far away from the Euclidean distance. It's just a, a normalization of, of, of the value. And uh, another idea, and but we stop on, the, on this point, we will resume up after the lunch with that, with the exercise for you again. What about similarity based on the name of the cities? Rome is called to Romeo, for instance. Using the, the string of the name of the city as, as a, a source of similarity um, for the city itself. I suggest to have a break now. Let's say we can resume <clears throat> in 45 minutes. So um, at, the, at the one at 45, and you can think about this if you want, or you can have just the lunch. And, and, and after in, in, the, in the second part, we, I will give you some time to implement it. You can, you can be familiar with this uh, file. It is called the MDS city inhabitants base.python. Base meaning that it is only this implemented, but you can add your own method on it hmm, to do something more. Just if you have time, go to look at the code of this. And please don't go through the slides. Hmm? I, I don't remember if I, I put the slides on, on the web. I'm not sure about that. Did I check? Yeah, I did. So don't don't go to the slide to see the solution. Push your brain on nice ideas of how to compare similarity of city based on the, their name instead of the number of inhabitants. We have only the name and the inhabitants, no more than that. Okay, see you in 45 minutes. Recording. 
So what is the idea? Learn how to tweak the dissimilarity matrix to get a different uh, result. Here we are going to do that basically for fun. But uh, in real application, you can tweak the, the similarity function uh, matrix according to your goal, to the task. And, and, and uh, that, that can be really interesting. Defining the similarity between complex objects, like two movies, hmm? similarity between two movies, two football player, two cars or, or whatever. First of all, I, I want to show you the code. Uh, we don't need the mat here. Of the oh. this is my mother. She will never stop. However, um, we have the code. Basically, here we we read the data inhabitants. We fill a matrix of zero. And after that, here, sorry, here is the matrix with the, scusate. Okay. Here we have the matrix with the O zero, meaning all of them similar. And after that, in this double cycle, we give a value to each dissimilarity. In this case, it's just the, the distance as we did before between the number, the difference between the number of inhabitants. And if we run the story, we get this result that you already saw. I'll show you just uh, if we tweak a little bit this. For instance, we can, uh, oh, let's say, um, reduce this value, square root of the, of, of the difference. Hmm? If I run it again, you see you get a, a different result. There is a, more details about some cities, Rome is still far away. Or the other way around, if we amplify this value, rising it to two, just, just for fun, no meaning in that. You see, Roma now is, is far away from the rest of the cities, has been totally separated. So, tweaking with this uh, um, matrix can be really interesting. It, it, and maybe it, it, it requires some kind of uh, experimentation. Hmm? You, have a, you got an idea, you experiment a formula, you change the formula. Uh, when comparing to movies, what is most important? The length of the movie, the rating from, 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 uh, from, from, the, from, from people, the, the actors, the, the two movies are similar if they have the same sub set of, of actors. You, you can think about that, hmm? and it, that could be interesting. And it, it, it is driven by the, the goals of the user, the task of the user. In the end, of, your exam will consist in, in an application, a visual analytics application that should be taught for someone having a task, a making decision, someone making decision, uh, a, a lover of movies or football, a real user using the system. According to the task, you can define your own similarity matrix. Now, I would like to still go for uh, some fun. If I share my slides. Okay. Now, I, I suggest you to think a little bit. You take this, this basis. No, I, it's not here anymore. The, 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 the example, the, the snapshot, snapshot of code you saw before. Hmm? And just modifying the, the value of sign to the dissimilarity. Uh, think of something about the name of the cities. 
to, to see this, to, I want to like to use the name of the city as a, as a mean of similarity. Hmm? And uh, think a little bit about that. Come up with the, why two names are similar. Hmm? You're thinking about just the name. Roma, Milano, are they similar, not, I can measure, the, ju ju just I do to give you five minutes, 10 minutes to think about some, some ideas. You can use the, the, the string composition, the, 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 the letters that are inside, the starting part of the name, whatever you have in mind. And the results are, are really interesting. Let's go think a little bit about that. You see the question? Jacquard distance, very good. Very good idea. Hoping that you didn't read the, the slides. Hmm? Jacquard distance between the names would be uh, uh, because someone pointed the, the idea. Here it is. Yeah, you, you can implement the Jacquard. I remember that Jacquard similarity is the number of elements in the, in the intersection by the number of elements in, in the union. Hmm? And here there is the <coughs> implementation in Python for Jacquard distance. And uh, maybe the, it, is it interesting that say that, that this is a, a measure of similarity. To transform it in a measure of a dissimilarity, a very good idea is to do one less. Hmm? When, when Jacquard distance is equal to one, it means that two sets are identical. One less one but is zero. That means that they are identical. So you can have a, also a function of similarity. You do one less that. Okay, this is nice. But, uh, and here we have some, some points. We see that uh, Cerignola and Moncalieri, according to Jacquard, are very similar. But I don't think that human beings think in, in terms of the composition of the name. I think that people think, say, think in terms of the starting vowels or, 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 or the name or the, the, the sound, but uh, I don't see any similarity between Moncalieri and Cirignola, even if they share the E, the I, the R, they have a, the N and the O, they have a lot of, of, of letters in common, but my perception is not that. So another possibility should be to see uh, if they are similar as a, a starting way. Try to think a little bit about that. Thank you. I start recording again. So my suggestion was to, to come up with a formula, an idea of a formula, how to have similarity between two words using the, the initial part, the starting part of the, of the word itself. My intuition, just to give you a suggestion, is that it depends also on the length of the words. In the sense that if one is short, the other is very long, the similarity decreases. Maybe but you just uh, divide the... Uh, please, you are... <laughs> move your microphone. Or oh, that was a question. Was it a question?
Recording is on now. Yes, I'm recording. I just type, divide the word into, into parts. Yeah, common part, a different part. That, that's a possibility. Yeah. Ah, okay. Jacquard in the first part. Not sure because Jacquard is not about the order. The same problem that we before. However, it is an idea, a possibility. Again, here a solution does not exist. We are just speculating on it. And uh, I, I will show soon uh, my solution, but my solution is my solution. It is just an idea, but it is that it produces a very nice plotting at least. Hmm? Okay. I think that uh, we talked a little bit about that. The point is not to find, figure out the solution. The point to me was uh, stimulate your brain to think that uh, you can be really creative in this uh, similarity, this similarity matrix, and you can produce ni nice uh, analysis in that. Because uh, MDS does a very good job in putting very close objects that are similar according to according to what you want. I show you my, my idea. I defined the, a function in Python that I call it the same start. Basically, I'm counting how many letters are in the same order from the first one. And after that, so this while, uh, it takes the, the shortest one, of course. While, while the letters are equal, we are counting. In the end, E, I, sorry, we'll have, they have uh, the three le initial letter perfectly equal, four. And I normalize by the length. Be because uh, the shorter the two words, the higher the similarity, in my opinion. And uh, that's that. I use it in, 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 the, in the, um, uh, the similarity matrix, this one less this as, as uh, the similarity. Because uh, when, when, when uh, the two words are totally equal, that will return one in the end. And yet this, here the result, the result is nice because you see Trani, Trapani, Treviso, cost each other, Battipaglia, Bagheria, Bisceri, and uh, I mean, Civita Vecchia, Cinisello, La Mezzia Terme, Lama. Okay, you, you got the point. Hmm? And it works, that's for free. Hmm? And uh, here I have uh, Another example of wine, it is very provocative because uh, I am doing the dimensionality reduction uh, augmenting the dimension. What am I doing here? I take the wine data set, I suppose you're familiar with it. I just take the value from the alcohol. So I take a vector, a single vector, single component. And I just run MDS using as the similarity the gradient distance. So do two wines that have the same alcohol gradation are similar, zero. And that's nice because we are moving from one dimension, because this is a more dimensional data set, to be dimensional data set that is the plotting on MDS. And this is the result. And uh, you can see there is this strange shape, maybe that has been influenced by this. Uh, this MDS is, is not so predictable. If you change the seed, the initial seed, you can get it with the not with the different, not so different, but quite different the results. But in, anyhow, 
you perceive uh, somehow that uh, there is a, a separation in graduation, in graduation we have the, the, the this is the, the first uh, cluster zero, cluster two, cluster one, hmm? green, blue, and red. Green and red are clearly, clearly far away in alcohol gradation, while in the class two, in the, the blue one, is in the middle. Hmm? It's, it, is, it is overlapping. Just to show that uh, MDS is totally flexible. Hmm? The, dim the dimensionality of the input does not care. Uh, it is a, a dimensionality reduction, but basically is a way for assessing similarity. And, and, and the object put in, in, in similarity analysis can, can come from one dimensional data set like this, or 1,000 of dimensions, it's the same. I have a, a formula for that. And that, uh, oh, I have a, here another point. If, let me see if this work. Just a moment. I want to put in the chat a link. Uh, 